I'm starting a new series showing you how to make Minecraft data packs. I'll go in depth about lots of different aspects of data packs. Zero prior knowledge of data packs is required, although you should know at least the basics of Minecraft commands. If you don't, check out my videos on that. But let's get started by learning how to create your very own data pack. So first, you want to go to visualstudiocode.com at uh, link in the description and you want to download Visual Studio Code. Now what this is going to do is this is going to be useful for editing our data packs. So probably most of you are on Windows so just click the download thing on Windows and then when it's downloaded run the installer and you should be good to go. Now I've already got it installed so I don't need to download anything. Next we want to open Minecraft and we're going to create a new world. Now it doesn't have to be a new world, you can use an old world, but I usually just like to create a new world for testing my data packs. I'll call it data pack tutorial because that's what we're going to be doing today. Make sure to set it to creative so you have cheats and you can easily test stuff. Then I usually go to game rules and I turn off mob spawning, update weather and advanced time of day. Done. And now we're going to go to more world options and just turn generate structures to off and change the world type to super flat. Then I like to customize this and use the uh, redstone ready preset. Um, and I also like to customize it a bit just to make it a bit nicer and make this stone bricks instead of sandstone. It's completely up to you though. Uh, I know lots of people like to use uh, void worlds. Anyway, so now I'm going to use the preset. Then there you go, you can see, done. And then create new world. Now let's wait for the world to finish creating. And okay, we're in. So as you can see, we have a nice flat world here, nothing here, and we can easily do some data pack testing on here. So now we can quit the world. And then we're going to go onto that, press edit and then go to open world folder. Now here we are with the world folder open. So I'm just going to put that in on the side there. We can click save now. But let's go onto the world folder and open data packs. So inside here we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it tutorial. Now this can be whatever you want but I'm just calling it that because it is a tutorial. So inside that we're going to make a folder called data and a new blank file called pack.mcmeta. Let's open pack.mcmeta and inside there we're going to type two curly brackets and then inside that we're going to type in quotes pack and then outside of the quotes colon and then two more curly brackets. Inside of that we're going to type pack underscore format in quotes again and then colon uh, the newest version is 9 uh, but in the future it, that will be changed so in 1.20 it might be 10 or so on uh, and then we're also going to do description and this can be whatever you want and then in quotes we're going to have a description so a tutorial data pack and then we can save that close it and then if we right click data and do open with Visual Studio Code, here Visual Studio Code will open and here we are. So sometimes it might ask you like, do you trust the authors of data and you just want to click yes because you are the author. But anyway, now what we're going to want to do is go to view, then extensions, then in here we want to go to the search extensions and search for language MC function. Now that's that's the one we want. Syntax highlighting for MC function files. Now you don't need this, but it just makes it way easier to code data packs. Now you can see here, I already have it installed, but there will probably be a button that says install that you'll need to click. Then next we're going to search for data pack helper plus. Now there are tons of these, but data pack helper plus is the one I use and I find it pretty good. So it's this one. And again, you can see that I already have it installed. So now we can go back to the Explorer. And inside data, we want to create two folders. One called Minecraft. That will store all of the default data that's already in Minecraft. 
and then another one called tutorial. Now, this can again be anything you want, but a convention is to keep it all lowercase and no spaces, just underscores, and have it be a kind of shorthand for what your data pack is about. So mine's going to be called tutorial. So we don't want it inside Minecraft, let's just drag it out there. So now, inside Minecraft, we're going to add a folder called tags. Then inside that, we want to add a folder called functions. In there, we want to add a new file called tick.json and one called load.json. So inside load.json, we're going to type two curly brackets. Then inside that, we want to do, in quotes, values, and then a colon and then two square brackets, and inside that we want to have in quotes, tutorial colon load. Now I'll explain what that does in a second, but for now we'll just copy that and paste it into there and replace the load here with tick. Now inside tutorial we're going to add a folder called functions. This will store, store all the functions inside so we're going to create a file called load.mc function and mc function is basically a custom file name that will allow us to write minecraft commands we'll also make one called tick.mc function now i can explain what load and tick.json do so in this when the game loads or when the data pack loads it will look inside tutorial inside functions for a function called load.mc function and it will run that and then tick will basically do the same but every tick 20 times a second it will look in tutorial for tick so now make sure that t the tutorial bit matches your namespace and if you want you can rename your tick so some people like to call it loop.mc function or uh, main.mc function uh, but I like to call it tick um, and then, but if you do change it, just make sure that this tick also matches the name of the function. So now we're going to go into load.mc function and we're going to write our first command. Now this is one I like to have in pretty much all of my data packs. Uh, I just do tell raw. And you can see here it kind of auto completed it for us. That means the extension is installed correctly. At A and then curly brackets in quotes text colon and then I just use loaded um, and this just tells me like when the data pack loaded to make sure that it all loaded correctly so now if we go back into Minecraft and then into our world okay and now if we type slash reload it writes loaded in there there you go that means our data pack is working correctly and you can do any command in here so if we do give at a stick that would work as well um, and then, for example, in tick, just to show what it does, I'll just do say tick. And then if we go back into Minecraft and type slash reload again, there you go. And it's saying tick tons. So if we write hi, it's gone straight away. So anyway, that is how to make your own data pack. And in the next video, I will be showing you how to make your very own custom items. I'll see you then.